Hi, my name is Rickard, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate the poster for Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It. So this tutorial actually comes as a request from one of my viewers. He wanted to know how to recreate the look of this poster and specifically this fake kind of painted look. So we're going to dive into that. There are a few things I should mention. First, this is not a beginner tutorial. So if you're very, very beginner in Photoshop, I recommend you take a look at some of my other compositing tutorials first. Minimally, take a look at my tutorial on the most common Photoshop shortcuts. That'll give you a little bit of a primer and catch you up to speed before you dive into this one. Second, for any kind of painting project in Photoshop, uh, using a mouse is not recommended. I definitely suggest you get some kind of a drawing tablet. I recommend a uh, Wacom tablet. I'll include a link to the one that I use, but really any tablet from Wacom is gonna be good enough to use. Uh, what you want is that pressure sensitivity in the pens. I have tried other pens and honestly, I've always gone back to Wacom. So. I know they're a little bit pricey compared to some other ones that you can find, but I definitely recommend if you're going to be doing a lot of painting in Photoshop, get a Wacom. Lastly, if you want to follow along with this tutorial, I have included a link in the description that has all the assets I use. This is kind of a lengthy tutorial, so go ahead and pause and download that. That includes the brushes that I use as well as the image that I used in the tutorial. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is go to File Open. And obviously we don't have exactly the same photo to start with, but I did find one on Pexels that I think has a lot of the same qualities that we want. It's got a hand coming up to the mouth. It's got a nice face. It's got a um, intricate earrings and it's got the braided hair. So, for our purposes, this photo is going to do quite well. So our first step is going to be cutting her out of the background. Now there's a lot of ways to do this. I am going to use what is the quickest way, which is go on to your wand or quick selection tool, and the shortcut for that is W, and then click on Select Subject. And you can see here, it's done a really good job right out the box. There are a few spots that we're going to have to clean up, but we can do that quite easily. So once we've done this, we're going to go to Select and Mask. We can just zoom in here. And to zoom, what I'm doing is holding down the space bar and Command. And I do have a whole video of shortcuts Photoshop shortcuts, the ones I use the most, I really suggest you take a look at that if you find yourself having trouble keeping up with my tool changes and so forth. There's a whole other video for that. All right, so here what we're going to do is make sure we're on this tool, the top one, and then hold down Option to minus. We'll just get rid of that spot right there. Zoom in here. And to adjust my brush size, I can use the right and left brackets. That'll make it go up and down. Or I can do Control and Option and then scrub left and right. So I want to make sure my brush is smaller than this green space. And then we can just select it like this. Go ahead and do it in here. It's having a little more trouble in here, obviously. And you can see it had quite a bit of trouble there, so I'm actually going to do that um, probably just with a marquee tool afterwards. Okay, now another nice trick here is the refine edge. And this allows you to kind of get what's in between here. So based on the information that it's already gathered in terms of what you're selecting, it's going to do a pretty good job guessing what's behind and what's in front. So we'll use that for the last of this.
Good. Now what I'm going to do is turn on the smart radius, put that up to about three pixels and hit OK. All right, now I have my selection. This is what re is referred to as running ants. I want to see my selection. I can click on this, which is turns on my quick mask. You can see here that it's green. If you want to change that, go to channels, double click down here on the quick mask, and then you can change those settings. I believe the default is magenta. So we can switch that up just so this looks a little closer to what you may be seeing. And we'll put it on 50%. Okay, so now here you can see we have a few spots that we want to fix. I'm just going to use a marquee in this case. Um, the nice thing about Quick Mask is you can go on your brush tool, um, select a brush here, and then paint black and white to add and subtract from your selection. Again, I'm using the control and option here to adjust my brush. And if I go up and down, I'm gonna adjust the feather of the brush. So it's just a very nice interactive way to adjust your brush. Okay, so next I'm gonna go into the lasso tool. A nice trick on the lasso tool is hold down option when you're using it. What that's going to do is, so here I'm using the lasso. If I accidentally let go, you can see it closes the selection, and I don't want that. Um, I've lost so many selections with that happening. So a nice trick is when you start making your selection, hold down option. Now if I let go, you can see it changes the tool to the polygonal lasso tool. Just going to go around here. Because this is going to be turned into a painting, I don't need to be super accurate on the selection here, but I do want to do a relatively good job. Okay, now I want to fill with black, which is my foreground color, and to fill with your foreground color, option delete. Again, I do recommend you look at my tutorial on the most used Photoshop shortcuts, um, because I cover all those in there. Okay, there you go. That looks pretty good. You can hit Q again, and let's go ahead and put a mask on this layer. And also, after I've added a mask based on a selection, I do like to just look at the mask and see if there's any obvious errors in it or anything that I want to clean up. To do that, what you're going to do is hold down Option and click on the mask. So it actually looks quite good. The only thing that may be problematic is these spots here where it should be white. So we can just go on our brush, switch the color to white there, and I can do that with X and then just paint in those areas there. All right, there you go. We now have her cut out. The next thing I want to do is cut her hair out so that I have the hair separate from her and I can make some color adjustments on it. Now, we already have the hair cut out around all here, but what I need to do is separate it along this line. Now, to do that, I know that the quick selection tool isn't going to work that well um, because here we kind of lose distinction between the hair. Um, you can see if I try to do it, what's going to happen. As soon as I get close to this edge here, it's going to start selecting more than I want it to. So instead, what I'm going to use is the pen tool. The nice thing about the pen tool is uh, you can make adjustments to the selection afterwards. And also, it really makes it easy to make nice curved lines. So make sure you're on path and not shape. And what we're going to do is just zoom in here and start making my path. And to make my path, I'm going to click. That'll create an anchor point click again, and then you can drag 
to adjust the curve of the path between the two anchor points. After you've let go, what you want to do is click here, holding down Option, and that's going to cut off that handle. And the reason you want to do that is otherwise if you click here and start dragging, you can see that this handle is affecting this curve and you don't want that. Now you can also do Option and adjust it so that they're independent of each other, but in this case it's easier to just click and cut it off. All right, so now I'm going to kind of fast forward through this. All right, there you go. You will notice up here that I kind of just went on the outside of the hair. Obviously, I can't do paths all through here. That's going to take way, way too long. Plus, we have the Refine Edge tool for that. All right, so once my path is made, what I'm going to do is right mouse click and go down to Make Selection. And here we want to make sure anti-aliasing is turned on. We want it to be a new selection. And under the feather radius, we can add like a 0.2 on there. So let's hit OK. That's made our selection there. I want to make sure I'm not on the mask, that I'm on this layer here. Now you'll notice on the outside I have the, um, the selection. I just kind of went outside. And that's because I already have a selection here of her hair. So I don't need to redo this edge. But to pull my selection in, what I'm going to do is hover over the mask, hold down the command key, and you'll see that I just added that little marquee on the bottom of my cursor. Then I'm going to hold down Shift and Option, and that's going to intersect the selection. You can see what it just did there. All right, next, I'm going to go on the layer, go on any of my selection tools and click on Select and Mask. I'm going to go on the Refine Edge tool there, make my brush a little bigger, and then just go into this area here. And you can see right away that did a nice job of separating the skin from the hair. All right, let's hit OK. And I want to get rid of these parts of the selection. Again, I'm going to hit Q to go into my Quick Mask mode. And then I'm just going to use my Marquee tool here to cut the skin out. Again, because we're turning this into a painting, my selections aren't super important, but I would say that at least 60 to 70 percent of your work when you're doing a composite is the selections, and that really determines how nice your final product is. So. Spend time on your selections. To add to a selection, as I just did there, hold down Shift. And that's going to add to your selection. And then w once you've started the selection, you can actually let go of Shift and then hold down the Option key again. Um, generally, when I'm using the Lasso tool, I'm always holding down the Option key. And that's in case I accidentally let go. It's not going to close that selection. There you go. Now I want to fill that with the foreground color, so Option Delete. And let's do Command D to deselect Q to get out of the quick mask mode. Now I've got my hair selected. I'm going to add a curves layer and just color this hair. So to color the hair, I want to add yellow and red. So the opposite of blue is yellow, so let's add some yellow. And the opposite of green is magenta. And I want to add magenta, so I'm going to pull this down. And then in the red, I'm going to go ahead and add some red. I do have a whole tutorial on coloring with curves, um, which I'll link to. And it's a really good primer on using the curves to add or subtract color. 
but that looks pretty nice. I kind of want that reddish, reddish brown here. The last thing I want to do is punch up some of these darker areas here. Not the last thing, but the last part of this section of the tutorial here. All right, so let's go ahead and just add a curve and brighten it. That looks pretty nice. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this whole mask with black and then go on my brush tool, make sure my foreground color is white, and then just select a uh, feathered brush, and then I can paint in these areas that I want a little bit brighter. Probably the lips as well. Good. And then I also really want to punch up the earrings, so I'm actually going to use a, a different curve on that that's far more punchy. So first thing I'm going to do is just select these. So let's go back on the pen tool, which is P. And one thing on paths is when you start making a path, it's going to replace your work path. So be aware of that. Um, it's nice to save your work paths in case you need to use those selections again. So to save it, simply double click it and give it a name so we can call this hair. And that way, when we start making our new one, it's not going to overwrite the one we've done previously. And I tell you, there's so many ways to make selections in Photoshop. I probably have five or six different tutorials on it. I do have courses on it as well. Um, but the one I kind of fall back on the most is probably the curve. Um, again, just because like you have so much control and after the fact you can go make changes to it like I just did there. Most of the other selection tools don't give you that option. And here, because I have two, I want to make sure that this right here is on exclude overlapping shapes so that it cuts that out. I do have other tutorials as well that go further into all the options of the path tool, which you can check out. I'll try to include a link there for that. Okay, so there you go. We've now made our path. And what I can do is right mouse click. Now, notice how this path is selected. These, these two aren't. What that's going to do is it's going to only make a selection of that. So I want to go in my arrow tool here, path selection tool, just select all three and then do my make selection. There you go. And then I can add my curve layer here. And if I just pull this out so I can see the earring, you can see I have almost no white information in my histogram. So I'm going to pull that up quite a bit. And that's kind of what I want there. I want to really punch up those lights. All right. Let's put this back here. Okay, so then we're going to take all these layers. Oh, actually, before I do that, I want to get rid of this arm tattoo. Again, we are going to turn this into a painting, so it's not super crucial that I do a really nice job. But when I'm painting, I don't want to contend with the tattoo there. So let's go ahead and use our lasso tool. Make a selection there. Now you'll notice that because of depth of field, this arm is a little bit blurry. So I want to feather my selection here. What I can do is click on Q or go on the quick mask and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It's another nice thing about the quick mask. It lets you actually blur in real time your selection.
Let's hit OK there. And Q again. I'm just going to make a new layer here. Go on my brush tool. I want to make sure I have a soft feathered brush. And then I'm just going to select by holding down Option. And then start painting. Select again. Paint, select, paint, select, paint. I'm just going to kind of do that. And we can select there. Um, I could also take down the opacity here. Like if I were doing this on a photograph as opposed to something that I'm going to turn into a painting, I would do a better job. Obviously, you can see that this is painted over. But for our purposes, that's going to work just fine. All right, now what I'm going to do is take all these layers, hold down Shift to select more than one layer at a time, right mouse click, and convert to Smart Object. Let's call this Smart Object Girl. And I'm going to go to Filter, Camera Raw. What I want to do is really punch up the colors here. So we're going to do plus 30 here, plus 25 here. Uh, on the exposure, I'm going to do minus 0.25. I'm going to punch up the contrast, 13. Punch up the highlights as well. Take the shadows down just a little. Increase the clarity just a bit. And then pump up the vibrance. And on my curve, I want to punch up the red a little bit, add some yellow, and then give the whole thing a little bit of an S curve. There you can see that's going to just really punch up the color on the whole thing. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is recolor some of these strands of hair. And to do that, we're going to select them and then use a hue saturation layer on them. So let's go ahead and start with this one here that has the ring on it. We're going to turn that one blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a quick selection here just of a few strands, just using the lasso tool here, freehanding it. That's enough for now. What I'm going to do is go to hue saturation and then just move that over until it gets a nice blue color. I don't want to go to cyan, so maybe right around there is nice. So minus 170. And now what I can do is go on this mask and just start painting. And I'm going to make the brush about the size of my hair. And then just paint this whole strand of hair here. I also want to paint this strand right here. And this strand here that's kind of hidden and then bumps up a few times. Good. Next, I want to paint this strand here. Uh, kind of a purpley magenta color. So what I'm going to do, we can call this blue strands. I'm going to make a copy of this. Fill in the whole mask with my black background color. So 
We're going to do Command Delete, which fills with the background color. Option Delete fills with foreground. Command Delete fills with the background. All right, so now go ahead and start painting this strand. Good, and now what I can do is go here, double click here, and we're gonna move this more to a purpley magenta color. So let's say minus 73, looks good. And let's change the name of this to purple strands. And I wanna do this strand here that's next to the blue strand and comes out I'm going to turn that one purple as well. So again, I'm just going to zoom in here, start painting. It's this one right here. And if while you're painting you overshoot, you can always hit X and just paint that with black. That's the nice thing about the mask. Good, and then finally, I want to make this strand right here a goldish color. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of this again. Go ahead and fill in the mask with black there. And start painting this one right here. It's kind of this more obvious one here. Just paint a little bit of it here and then We can adjust this. And let's go to the right. Let's say uh, plus 30, I think, looks good. And we'll change the name of this layer to yellow strands. And go on the mask and let's go ahead and paint this whole braid. I also want to do this braid here. And maybe also make a purple strand here. So I'm going to select the purple layer and just add a purple strand next to this blue one. So we have some nice color variation up here. Good, I like that. The next thing I want to do is just add more eye detail in here. And for this, I found another photo of another woman whose eyes are looking in a very similar direction. What I'm going to do is actually take that eye and paste it in here. So if we go to File Open, you can see another layer here called Adult Beautiful Blur. Let's go ahead and open that. I'm going to use this eye right here. This whole image has far too much uh, magenta and red. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to do a image adjustments and just black and white the whole thing. Because really I just need that luminance information. I don't need all that color information. So let's go ahead and really make a nice selection just around the pupil here. And Command C, and then Command V, 
And let's go ahead and make a, co a copy of it before I shrink it. And we'll call this left eye. And let's shrink that down. I just want to put it in the same place that her eye is here. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to do a curve layer on here, which is Command M, and add the color that I want in here. So again, to add color, I'm going to go to the red, pump that up a bit. But really, I want to go into the green to add the magenta and the blue to add yellow. Kind of want this to be more of a brown color. That's pretty nice. And I'm going to go on my eraser tool and select kind of a small feathered brush and just brush those edges right there. And that's pretty nice. Probably a little bit too bright. So let's go back. The problem is if I do a new curve, I'm going to actually that's not really a problem. Never mind. All right, let's take this down a little bit. We just want some of that detail coming in there. I think that looks relatively natural. So now let's delete this one and let's make a copy, Command J. We're going to call this one Right Eye. And we'll just drag this down here and adjust it accordingly. Now, if you hold down command, you can drag these dots independent of the others. When you're in free transform, and free transform is command T. I have a whole nother tutorial on using the free transform, which I can, you can look for in my channel. Okay, there you go. So we have now some nice eye detail in there. And I think we're ready to start painting. So before we paint, let's take all this and convert it to a smart object again. And now we're ready to start painting. Okay, so now we're going to go to Filter, Stylize, Oil Paint. And I'm going to set the stylization here to 7.5. Set the cleanliness to 5.25. Want the scale 4.1 and the brush detail to 2.25. And I don't want any lighting. So let's hit OK. What that's going to do is it's going to give everything a painted look, but there's some places where we don't want that. So the nice thing about this is because it's a smart object, it's actually applied it as a filter with a mask. So now we can go ahead and on the mask, we can paint out the areas that we don't want affected. So let's make sure we're on a round feathered brush, which we are. Make that a bit bigger. And let's go ahead and paint out the eyes, the rings, the lips, the teeth, the earrings, and that looks pretty good. 
All right, next what I want to do is add a background layer. So let's call this background. And for the background layer, I want to kind of have a warm yellowy orange color. And let's fill that so that's option delete. Kind of want it to go from a little bit darker to a little bit lighter. So let's go ahead and add another layer up here. And we're going to make this just a little bit lighter. And go on our gradient. Make sure we're on foreground. Foreground to transparent. And then just start here. Hold down shift. Make a little bit lighter up there. And I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit darker down here. Again, shift, and there you go. All right, next, what I want to do is add some white around her. So what I'm going to do is hold down Command to select the transparency of that layer. Make a new layer here called White Glow. I'm going to fill that with white. Command Delete. And then blur that. So to about there, so 100. And I want to double that up, so Command J to copy the layer. And then Command E is going to collapse those two layers. So if you want to double that up quickly, you can just do Command J and then Command E. And you can see now I have that as one layer. Next, I want to go on my brush tool. And I'm going to call this White Edges. And this is, we're going to start painting here. So let's go to our brushes. And I've included in the assets for this tutorial some brushes. You can go ahead and select those. I'm going to use this top one here. Uh, make it a bit bigger. And then just kind of. Uh, make sure I have white as my foreground color and just paint in some of these edges here. And you can really use any brush. In this case, I may actually even just use um, this brush here or this brush. Either one looks quite nice or even this brush here. So these are the default brushes. So let's go ahead and use this one. Just make that a bit bigger and just kind of I just want a little bit of white in the edges. We're actually going to smear this quite a bit, so um, it's not that important um, which brush you use, although having a brush that has some texture to it will help a little bit. I want a few places that just kind of stick out more than the others. And that looks quite good. Okay, so now we're going to get to the fun part, which is turning this more into an actual painting. So let's call this paint layer. And this is where you do want to use one of the brushes I gave you. So if we right mouse click here and you go to the tutorial brushes, you're going to see a mix brush. And let's go ahead under here. I'm going to do this over here so that you can see me. All right, so here I'm going to change this so that I can see the brush name. And you'll see here there is a brush called Mix Brush Clean and Mix Brush Loaded. For this one, we want to use the Mix Brush Clean. And the difference between these two is here, you'll notice that it's transparent. And that means it's a clean brush. And here you can see that it's going to clean the brush after each stroke. So that's important. And it's also important that sample all layers is turned on. So if you didn't download my brushes, go on the mix brush and kind of match these settings up here. OK. All right. So now what we're going to do is basically just start painting. And what the mix brush does is it takes the colors that are in your image and basically kind of smears them together. And this is where you have some artistic license. 
um, you may want to pull up the um, reference poster and try to match that, or you can just do your own thing. Um, I'm going to kind of go through this quickly because it's not really a brush or a stroke for a stroke part of the tutorial. This is where you can kind of just use your own creativity. Generally, you're going to go around the whole image and add paint strokes so that it looks like it was painted. And I do adjust changing your brush size. So for areas like this, her cheek, where we have a, a larger area, you can use a really large brush. And then as you zoom in and do around the eye, you'll, you're going to want to use a smaller brush. And the primary areas you want to hit are her face, her arm, this shirt here, any part that still looks photographic. So this hair is quite nice already. It looks pretty nicely painted. Same with here. So you don't really need to bother with those. You do want to do around the whole painted and then her face, arm, and the shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing it here. And I will be fast forwarding through part of this so that you don't have to see it stroke for stroke. All right, so there you go. We've now added the nice paint effects. You can kind of see that before and after. That's really um, kind of the, the big step that's going to give you that painted look. And because you're doing it by hand, it gives you a much more realistic paint look than any kind of effect that you're going to just get from running a filter. Because here you're adjusting the brush to the painting itself, which is what you would do if you're actually oil painting. Okay, the next thing I want to do um, is make a new layer, and we're going to call this Paint Highlights. And this is where we want to give it some hints of color or hints of white. Um, and I've noticed that in paintings, kind of the, the touches of white highlights um, on the face and also the white highlight in the eye makes a big difference to make something look more painted. Okay, so for this, what we're going to want to do is go to our brushes and you'll see this mix brush loaded. And the difference between this is it's actually going to load the color and mix in some of your color into the painting. Again, we want to make sure we have sample all layers turned on. 
because we're using all the information from the layers below. All right, so with this one, kind of the key areas I want to hit, and I want to make the brush quite a bit smaller here, but the key areas I want to hit are the nose here, just adding a little bit of a highlight. You'll notice it is still mixing, which is nice. A little bit of a highlight there. And then what we can do is hold down Option and kind of mix in um, the other color as well if we feel like we need to. So just to give it more of a realistic look there. I'm going to do the same thing. Hit X, uh, D and X to get back to white and just add some white in here. Some white in here. And let's go ahead and also, it's a little bit much here. I can actually just delete this a little bit. It's a nice thing about having it on its own layer. We can always delete it if we don't like it. All right, let's go back on our brush here. And I want to add some kind of pink highlight. So I'm going to select the pink here, but then I'm going to make it brighter before I start painting. And let's go back to our clean mix brush. See if we can't just blend that in a bit more now. a little much. I'm going to go in the erase tool, turn the opacity down to let's say 25 and just erase a little bit of this so it's not so strong. There you go. That looks nice. All right and then I'm also going to add just some blush on our cheek here. So let's go back on our paint tool and select our loaded brush. What I'm going to do here is select the existing skin color and then just make it more red. So we'll just pull this down. Don't change anything else about the brush. Make it a bit bigger and then just add a little bit of blush in there. And maybe do the same with this slightly darker area here. And then switch back to the clean brush. Just mix that in a bit. Good, I like that. And maybe I'm going to add just a little bit of highlight on our forehead here as well. So back to the loaded brush and select this and just go lighter. Now, if I hit comma and period or the two kind of brackets, that'll switch me back and forth between my last two brushes. And that's helpful in this case because I do want to switch back between my loaded brush and my unloaded brush. Just another good shortcut to know. Okay, I like that. The other thing I want to do now is make a new layer. We're going to call this Details. And here what I want to do is 
add a real nice white highlight to the eye, and then maybe just a few touches of white detail or lighter detail somewhere else. So here I'm going to go back to my paint, and you're going to see this brush called Detail Brush. That's the one I'm going to use for this. I'll make it significantly smaller. And make white my foreground color. And then just paint in a highlight here. Pretty nice and obvious one, too. Maybe a little spot there. Like that. I'll go on the erase and just make it a little bit lighter right there. Good. And then I'm going to select kind of an orangey, pretty bright orangey color. Make a brush really small here and then just add some flecks of color in her eye. Like that. And then I think also with black, I'm going to make the iris a little bit more obvious here. Kind of really all we're doing here is we're helping sell the effect that this was hand painted by making more and more elements of it actually hand painted. It's a little bit strong. So maybe I'm going to go back to my mix brush here and let's do the clean mix brush and just maybe blend that in a little bit there. Good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Again, like I mentioned earlier, this part of the painting process is up to you, how far you want to take it, how much time you want to spend doing the painting part. But this kind of gives you an idea of how to do it, and uh, you can take it from there. Uh, one last thing I might do is just add some hits of color here. For that, I'm going to use my loaded brush. Loaded here. And maybe pick some of this blue. Now I need it way more saturated. Add some blue in here. And you do really want to do all this with a paintbrush because that's part of what's going to sell the illusion that this is a painting is the more you've hand painted it, um, the more it's going to look like a painting, right? So, just adding some hits of color in here. Maybe a nice gold color as well. And there you go. All right. Next thing we're going to do is add some splashes of, or some splatter of paint. And let's call this layer splatter. And if you right mouse click, or sorry, if you go to your brush tool, right mouse click, you'll see I have a splatter brush included in this. And I can actually show you quickly how to make a splatter brush because it's really straightforward and it is a nice trick to know. So let's go ahead, make a new layer and we'll call this uh, well, white background, I guess. I'm just going to fill that with white. And then with our marquee tool, we're going to make two black dots of varying sizes and a little bit kind of away from each other. And you don't want the size difference between these two dots to be too big, but I would say make one about 75% smaller than the other one. So there you go. And then we're going to just make a circle that make sure you have both of them selected and then go to edit, 
define brush presets. You're going to see here, you basically have two dots. That's what you want your splatter to look like. And we'll call this splatter new. And then go to your brush presets here. And what you want to do is go to shape dynamics and turn the size jitter to 100. Um, actually, let's keep that off so it's random. And you want your angle jitter on 100, and maybe round this to about 15%. You don't want too much roundness jitter. And then you want to turn on scattering on both axes. You can kind of see in the preview there how far apart, far apart those are going to go. I wouldn't go, well, let's say about 338% looks good. And there you go. That's how you create a splatter brush. Now we can throw this away. Um, Command D to deselect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this quite a bit smaller and then just select this color here and add some spray. And you can see these are kind of big splotches of spray. The rest, I'm going to make this significantly smaller and then add some nice, even smaller actually, and just add like spray coming in here. Um, I want to select a brighter color coming in down here, really just kind of coming into the edges. And if you look at the reference um, poster, you'll see kind of how it is in that poster and you can try to match it. And we also want some blue, kind of want it to be a little bit brighter or more saturated. We want some of the blue coming in here, here, maybe a little bit there as well, and then maybe some of this purple color as well. That's about nice. And then I do want to give also just a couple hits of a lighter yellow into this background here. Just kind of helps sell that illusion of paint. So I think that looks pretty nice. Again, this is something that you can do however much or however little you want, but that's how you do it. All right, then the last thing we're going to do is add some canvas texture on here. So for that, I'm going to add a layer. Well, let's call this canvas. And I'm going to fill this with a gray color. So let's make this 0, 0, 50, and that's just a pure gray. Fill that layer, Option Delete. And then here we're going to go to Pattern Overlay, which is under FX. And if we go to here, go to here and go to Artists, Brushes, Canvas, and we can hit OK. And it's the second one right here. That's the one you want. It looks like that. You can try that one too, but for this tutorial, you're going to go ahead and use this one. And we can put it on Normal, put it on 100%, and change the scale to 85. There you can see what our canvas texture looks like. And now I want this not to be an effect. So what I'm going to do, a nice, an easy way to get to uh, fix that issue is make a blank layer underneath, select both, and then do Command E. And that'll collapse it into its own layer there. So we're gonna, and it already has the right name. Good. Okay. So for this, we're going to put it on soft light. You can see it's far too strong right now. So we're going to change the opacity to 30, and it's pretty nice. And I kind of want it not to be so consistent. So what I'm going to do is put a mask on here. So make sure I have my mask selected. Go to Filter, Render, Cloud. And what that's going to do is it's going to put a cloud, a rendered cloud mask on the whole thing. So that, as you can see here, you have kind of different strengths throughout the whole thing. And if you want, you can also take this uh, mask and blur it. Hmm. 
And there you go. Also, um, I kind of want to make it so it's not so much detail. So what I can do here is I can just kind of select part of it, Command-T to transform and make that bigger. Like that. And that looks pretty nice. All right, now you'll notice in any dark areas, we're really not getting much texture. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to make a copy, Command-J. I'm going to delete the layer mask here. I'm going to put this on normal for now. And basically what I want to do is I want to get rid of all the darks and just retain the highlights. So I'm going to do Command-M for a curve. I'm going to really take this curve down all the way to about there. So I really just have those highlights. And then for those highlights, I'm actually going to take the green down to make them magenta and then do the same with the blue so that kind of an orange color about there. And maybe even make them darker here. A little too red. So let's take some magenta. About there. So that there you can see our green curve, our RGB curve, and our blue curve. So let's hit OK. We're going to put this one on screen. Now you can see there we're getting those nice highlights. Take the opacity down to probably 60. And I'm going to put a mask on this, go on my brush tool, select a really big, soft, round brush, make that quite a bit bigger, and then just paint it out in areas where I don't want it. And again, this is up to you. Um, you can see the effect that it's creating. I think that's pretty good. And I think finally the last thing I want to do is just add a layer, a curve layer that's going to kind of punch up the whole image. And I'm going to make an S curve. And there you have it. I'm not going to do the titles for this tutorial because it's already running so long, but there you have it. That is how you can create a nice painted effect of the She's Gotta Have It poster. All right, there you have it. That's how you create that fake painted look in Photoshop. And the more time you invest in recreating brush strokes, kind of doing that painting step, uh, the more realistic it's going to look. There are other tricks um, to add a painted effect. I actually really suggest you take my premium course on watercolor painting in Photoshop. Even though it's watercolor, it covers a lot of the techniques that you're going to use in any kind of Photoshop project where you want to take a photo and turn it into a painting. So I'll include a link to that in the description as well as a link to all my other premium courses. I highly recommend you take some of those. And finally, if you want to get into the world of Photoshop compositing and you're a beginner or you've been doing it for a while, I highly recommend that you get my Photoshop Starter Kit. It's entirely free and it has a bunch of assets that you can use for Photoshop compositing, Photoshop manipulation, and editing and retouching. Um, it includes brushes, textures, backgrounds, and so forth. All of it entirely free. You just have to sign up for my newsletter. And I will include a link to that in the description for this video. Otherwise, please subscribe. Please like this video and turn on notifications. Also, if you have a movie poster, a book cover, or some kind of Photoshopped image that you want to know how to recreate, let me know in the comments. I do look at them and I do take your recommendations. So go ahead, put that in there. Otherwise, I will see you next week. Here's some other videos to check out. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and I'm sorry about the little uh, audio 
hitches in this video. I think I had my microphone a little bit too close and the gain a little bit too high. I tried to clean it up. I did the best I could. All right. Hasta luego.